Hi guys, it's coffee time with Juho again. We have a, haven't had one in a few years, but now it's time again. So, during the summer I found a flea market on my summer trip with the family. And they had cameras. And I stupidly, uh, it was a full car, so I stashed this whole bag into the little thing underneath. Uh, my trunks thing and then when I uh, was emptying the car I didn't remember to to look underneath and now it has been it's now late October so it's been almost half a year in the trunk of my car this set but uh, let's first look a bit in what it is and then once we've uh, dismantled what it is I'll take it to the guys and they do some magic testing on it and let's see if I actually got working cameras or not so this is a Fuji DL200 as a quite a liked uh, compact camera it has a nice 32 millimeter 2.8 lens and uh, this quick load drop load uh, mechanism needs new light seals clearly but uh, otherwise it seems okay came with a pouch this bag I don't have a clue what this had uh, oh it's a Rolleimat Rolle Mat F that's not bad and another drop load Fuji a drop load 10 which has a 35 millimeter f 5.6 and still film inside so that was interesting and these were all from the same place basically uh, this is a Canon 28 you can see finger print on the front element so it needs some heavy cleaning this one feels like a Zenit, yes, it's a Zenit TTL Olympic Edition and this is a Zenit E, but the value in these two is basically in the two Helios lenses that were attached. And I think I paid, or the person was asking 40 euros for all of them and I think I paid 60 because uh, I knew that the lenses were okay enough for, uh, for me to be secure about paying 60. Um, but the question is, do these four actually work? So I'll just pop them over to the technicians and then come back to you. Now they are being checked. Uh huh. Those by Jonas. Hmm. Okay, I got my box back and the cameras are nice and clean. But did they work or did they not work? Um, that is the question. Uh, the first obvious one is that the DL200 is very hard to test because I think it has an internal. Um, uh, battery of sorts uh, uh, I, I think so at least um, but let's go through them and uh, I'll open the computer and see what Jonas the technician uh, that just got from this year's class said about them for the DL200 uh, it needs to get new batteries uh, soldered in basically so that cannot be tested it is quite a valuable one if it works DL10 on the other hand is it exposes correctly it works correctly there's some bigger dust particles inside the finder oh the finder needs to be well I don't know maybe there's some dust but not very big 
and then it needs a bit of a cleaning here in the battery door yeah yeah but it works already with this okay so th that's okay then uh, the Rolle mat this one it exposes correctly it needs new light seals which is not a surprise and then the film advance creaks and makes noises yeah i guess it does but i would say that's uh, part of the charm of that rollemat and then we get to the russian or not not russian soviet made in the ussr a material so there is the Zenit E. These are look so nice now that they've been cleaned by a technician. They're, they look really nice. Um, the, all the shutter speeds are correct, which is quite rare for a Soviet-made thing. Uh, and the meter reacts to light, but is not accurate enough to be, you know, within normal tolerances. This is a very questionable. It says outlet on it, and it would probably go on to outlet even though technically this is as good as it gets for uh, these bodies the lens is in great condition and that is what I could actually check at the flea market so that's why I paid the guy some extra because he had two nice condition heliuses and they're very nice now that they're actually clean and then let's see the cat any TTL what did you want to say about that the one one hundred and twenty fifth is a bit too slow it's 12 mill milliseconds again it's a zenith so i don't know if that's a um, i guess that's a good uh, thing for zenith that only one of the shutter speeds is off um, the light meter doesn't work at all and that's quite normal for this and then the viewfinder shows two photos and goes blue. Oh yeah, yeah. I do understand what this means, but again, I don't know if that's a um, kind of, is it meant to be like that? Yeah. And then the one interesting one, Canonet 28. Um, it needs new light seals that I knew. The meter reacts and works. Nice. Uh, it exposes correctly. Uh, with canons, it's always a question of yes, that the, the meter might be correct, but it m still might auto exposure wrong. Uh, canons do that for some reason, but this one passes both. It still has the, the front element uh, fingerprint. It didn't come off cor cont uh, the whole way. And then there's a lot of corrosion on the top. Yeah, I, I see what he means by corrosion. Yeah. It's, but yeah, it's usable. So actually, d did someone calculate the prying price? No. Uh, well, anyhow, uh, the shop would have given the guy much more money than I bought these with so I'll probably make a profit on my flea market finds uh, but uh, the main point was kind of to showcase uh, what I found and that they actually miraculously worked even if they were six months in the trunk of my car when I forgot them there uh, and yeah that was coffee time with Juho this time. Um, what do you want to know more about? Because I could do coffee times more often if there are li little things you would like to know about because coffee times are not that hard to arrange. I take coffee every day. It's just about putting the video on. And then the second question is uh, like that the question that you have must be small enough that I actually have the answer in a few minutes but see you next time